Everything I just played in that little ditty is based off the interval of thirds, major and minor thirds. All of Western harmony is based on thirds and stacking thirds. Thirds sound great, they're fun to play, they're easy to get under our fingers, and they're simple to implement in our rhythm playing and our lead work as well. Polishing thirds! That's what we're doing today on Ray Plays Guitar, and I'm going to do it as simply as possible. Let's get into it. So what are thirds? Thirds are just an interval, and an interval is just a measurement of a distance between notes. So if you take a major scale, start on the first note, in this case a C major scale, and play up the first three notes, C, D, E, from C to E is two whole steps. That's called a major third. If we go from D to F, that's also a third, but here we're only going up a step and a half. This is known as a minor third. So if we do those shapes from the same note, we can really hear the difference. C to E, major third, two whole steps. Minor third, C to E flat, one and a half steps. Major third, minor third. Now let's put these notes on two different strings. We put a C here and put an E here on the next string. Play those notes together, we're playing a third. Flat that E, and now we're playing a minor third. So this is a major third, and that's a minor third. And these shapes work if we put the root on the sixth string, or the fifth string, or the fourth string, or the second string. But if we put the root on the third string, a major third is on the same fret, and a minor third is on two different frets. Now with these two shapes, we could play what's known as a harmonized scale. Let's go back to a C major scale. And just play a third starting from each one of those notes. So the pattern that arises is pretty simple to remember. We start off with one major third. Then everything else happens in pairs. We have two minor thirds then two major thirds, then two minor thirds. Then we're back at our single major third. That's how you can access diatonic thirds, and we we're just playing diatonic thirds in the key of C. Let's switch it to the key of A. So here's an A right here. That's what it would be on those two strings, on the third and second string. On the first two strings,
So here I was just playing thirds, well, playing these open bass notes, either in open A. D. And in this key, it sounded okay if uh, sometimes if these two strings, open strings, rang out. Both those notes are in this key, so it works out well. There's a great way of using chords and creating a kind of a, a melody within uh, the chords you're <laughs> Now let's take that same idea and switch to a minor key. Let's go to A minor. Uh, a minor is the relative minor of C major. So we want to play the diatonic uh, triads in the key of C. So here, where, where's a C? Here's a C, right? Yep. So that, those are the triads I... Along these two strings, there would be these positions. Whoops. But we're going to do that over an A. We're going to play those triads over so we're gonna we're gonna play those thirds i keep saying triads instead of thirds let's keep we're gonna play those thirds over an open a bass note So in a diatonic setting, diatonic thirds work and sound great. Now, what if we want to play it in a blues setting? How do we use these diatonic thirds in more of a blues setting? Well, if we take like a, a standard blues in A, it's based off of three chords, A7, D7, and E7. And those are all dominant chords. In any diatonic set of chords, there's only one dominant chord, and that's the five chord. So there's no one key that has all three of these dominant seven chords in it. So when we change chords, we're really changing keys. How do we use these diatonic thirds in this sort of situation? We got to think modally a little bit. So over an A7 chord, we got to find the parent key of A7. So A7 is the five chord of what key? Well, if A is the five, five, six, seven, there's the root. So this is D. Five, A7 is the five chord in the key of D. So over an A7 chord, I would play the diatonic thirds in the key of D major. But over an A root. but I'm still just playing the triads in a D major scale. But I'm centering everything around the A modality. Over a D7, D is the five chord of Five, six, seven, root. G. So I'm going to play over a D7. I'm going to play the diatonic thirds in the key of G major. Over an E7, E is the five chord of five, six, seven, root. A. I would play thirds in the key of A major over that E7 chord. And that's 
basically what I was doing in that opening ditty. here so here's a move that i do all the time and that's putting in chromatic notes in between every pair of similar shapes so for example Now, it's, it, it might seem like it's a lot of things to keep in your brain, like when you switch chords, it's like, oh, wait, what key? Wait, wait, what, what, what? Yeah, here's a kind of a simpler approach. This, this is what I do in my simple brain. Uh, so you suppose you're playing, you're, you're doing the blues thing, you're going to play over the A7 chord, okay? So you find your, your primary triad. Here's an A right here. So here's my third starting on A. From here, just go down a whole step. Once you do that, there's your two shapes. You got two thirds next to each other. Once you go here, you gotta go to another shape, right? There it is. Once you do that, you're kind of set on the right path. Once you go down the whole step, you get your. That sounds right because that's that flatted seven sound. That's that down sound. Right there. And then you're back to this is the third and the fifth of, a, of an A chord. So when you go to D, well, here's a D right here. Here's a third up, up from there. So there's your, your primary D. Just go down two frets from there. You got all your pairs. Two minor thirds, two major thirds, two minor thirds. Here's your lone. When you go to E, find your primary E. Here it is. Go, go down a whole step, and then you're to the other shape. Done. Easy peasy. So let's go through those triads one more time. Over the A7. Over D. Over the E. So yeah, a lot of fun can be had just with triads and an open string. I'm just messing around. Thirds are fun. You can play them together. You can play them separately. That kind of thing. You can throw in a pull-off to an open string. Let's see how that would work. So I'm starting first string, pull off, 
and then hitting that second string. And that's how you polish a third. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor. Hit that like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit that notification bell. But most of all, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.